I'm Paul, half of Dads and Dice, and today we are previewing the brand new game in the Spire's End universe, Ranjitaki. Let's go ahead and see what we have and what this game is all about. All right, so here we are. We've got our Spire's End Rangitaki game. Uh, this is coming to crowdfunding. Um, when this video goes live, it should already be up there, so make sure to check that link out below. Uh, this is the newest game in the Spire's End universe, uh, kind of branching off of those different characters from the original game. Uh, and this game is going to be focusing on Rangitaki. Uh, you can see it's kind of got that same box style that Hildegard had um, with all the art in there. Uh, just to kind of preface this a little bit, this is a prototype copy. Um, so everything is subject to change, whether that is the artwork, uh, the text on the cards, uh, any components, anything like that. All of that is subject to change. Um, this is just a prototype copy, um, but it does enough to let us see what this game is going to be about. Let's go ahead and open this up and let's see what we have. So the first thing that you'll notice is obviously there's no insert or anything like that, like there was in Hildegard. Now again, this is a prototype copy. I'm sure that's something that they're gonna be working on. Um, so in here, we've got a couple of different things. Let's go through those. You'll see that we have these tarot size cards. Um, so unlike Hildegard, which had the standard size cards, these are the tarot size ones. And then unlike Spire's End, which had the custom ones, um, so that's one difference there. This will just kind of make it easier for, you know, sleeving and uh, have a standard kind of size there. Um, and it gives, you know, just a little bit difference than the other games. Here we have the chapter one deck. So again, this is a prototype. So we were only sent chapter one, um, but this is about a hundred cards. In the game, there's gonna be three total chapters. Um, with about 100 cards each. So there's going to be about 300 cards of gameplay, and this is about a third of the game. Also in here, you'll notice we have these health die. <clears throat> so we'll get those out just to kind of see what they look like, kind of talk about them a little bit. These are awesome. I absolutely love these dice to measure your health. So you have them here starting off at three, and then you just kind of rotate them as your health gets lower and lower and lower. Once you have that one all the way down, then you move to the next one and then it goes lower and lower and lower. So you'll start with nine health. Um, and then as the game progresses, you'll just kind of be lowering those as you go. We have a D20 dice here and the game should come with three of these, at least in the rule book it says that you need three of them. Um, again, prototype, we were sent one, uh, but we can make do with that. You're also supposed to have a, a D12. Um, we did not get one, so I have my personal one here that we'll look at. And then we have these action points here. And these action points are really the main resource in the game. So if you've played Hildegard, you know that they have the gold, they have, um, you know, the black and then the dark red cubes, and those kind of stand for different things. This is really just these action points, and this is how you will manage your actions and modify uh, dice rolls and all that kind of stuff. And then the biggest difference here, or one of the biggest differences, is we have this encounter board. Um, and this is where all the encounters are gonna take place. And, uh, you know, the, the encounters are completely different to what Hildegard was, to what Spire's End was. And that's what I really like about that. This is going to be completely different. And I'll explain how this works a little bit. We're actually going to do an encounter here in a little while. And I'll kind of explain how that goes. All right, so now that we've seen everything that is in the box, let's go ahead and get it set up. And this is one thing that I really enjoyed about Hildegard. You know, it's just the setup is super easy. Uh, and this one does that just as well. Everything about this game feels really familiar to the other games, but slightly different enough to actually make it engaging and worth, you know, a different game of it. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll start with nine health. We're going to be starting with seven action points. If I can get this little bag open here. Um, and like I mentioned, these action points are kind of your resource for the game and then how you use them um, based on 
you know, what, what your actions are. So I'll put these below my board here. Um, so there's three, four, five, six, seven. I've got a couple more here, which we'll use just kind of as extra resources. Um, you're supposed to remove all the non-numbered cards. So we have terrain decks, which there's three of them here. And then we have our enemy deck. And then one thing just to kind of look at, um, the artwork is just incredible. So you have this. It is a little bit darker than Hildegard, um, but there you have the classic Mai Tai. This is probably the image that you've seen quite a bit on some of the social media uh, posts and stuff like that. You have, what is this, Le Maro, who has, looks like a, a severed octopus wearing it as a necklace. Um, and then you have these severed heads cards. Uh, so this story is a little bit darker, uh, like I had mentioned, than Hildegard. Um, it does say 16 plus on the age recommendation, and that's just because the story um, has a little bit more, not necessarily violence, but um, gore and, you know, talking about severed heads and all that kind of stuff. And, and we'll read the first card, uh, and you'll get kind of an idea of that. And then we have our um, terrain deck over here. So I'm just putting those off to the side for now. And then, just like any other game of Spire's End, it is a choose your path card game, uh, and you just grab card one, flip it, and begin here. So here we have the first card. Um, it's laid out just like all the other Spire's End cards. You have some narrative text, and then you have a couple actions, and then it's gonna tell you to pull some cards. So let's read this first one, let's get completely set up, and then we'll go from there. Today, I was rushed into the home of the seer Mokai. I've been here for hours now, watching her work. She waves an unsteady four-fingered hand over a cauldron filled with a dark, swirling liquid. It's ready, she says at last. Moakai opens her mouth and heaves. Her tongue curls out over her lower lip as her throat bulges upward. The seer reaches into her mouth and pulls out a small knife, followed by dripping cords of foul black ichor. She extends, the, she extends the knife to you, finger or toe. Pull cards 83, 84, and 85. So just like before, you're going to look for those cards when it says pull. So we're going to have 83, 84, and 85. And this is kind of our, um, well, this is going to be our starting character, right? So here we have actual Rangitaki. Uh, and it says at the bottom, action point seven. So we're gonna keep her right here for now. We're gonna put those action points on her just to signify that she has them. And then here we have talents. Um, and this is a way to kind of get our dice or to modify dice rolls to, to get better chances and challenges um, and all that kind of stuff. And this is where the event inventories are gonna go below this card. Um, and you'll use those these tokens here, these round discs to place them on here. Um, again, to modify uh, dice rolls, which I'll explain in a little bit. So that's gonna go there. And then we also have our travel satchel. And here you have different, um, I'm gonna assume there are different types of fruits. I know this one is, says breadfruit, this is uku, and then we have abergerne. I'm not sure exactly what that is, um, but you can spend these at certain times throughout the game to gain health or other things that you may need. And then this is where your item inventory will go. So we'll keep those to the side. We don't have anything down here yet. Um, and so that's the first card. Uh, of the game. And now we're completely set up. We can continue going through this deck. Um, I don't really want to spoil the game for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue playing. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit. I'll kind of talk through uh, what happened. And then when we come back, we'll be at the encounter phase and we'll actually run through one of the encounters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. going to add one critical point to my event inventory um, and then here we're doing a mental challenge uh, so my mental challenge I have to hit a 10 if I fail I take a wound so I do pass the mental challenge with 17 um, 
so I do not take a wound. So here we actually pulled the encounter actions, um, and these are going to be the actions that I'm going to be able to play throughout uh, the encounters, um, and I'll explain those a little bit more um, when we actually get to that encounter. All right, so here we are. We've reached the first encounter. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier that this is a prototype copy of the game. I know for a fact that this card has been changed and then a couple things in the first encounter have been changed. Um, we're just gonna play it out how it's written here on the card. But again, I know this has changed. Um, I do have the revised cards. Um, I don't have a printout or anything like that. I have them digitally. I don't have them available to me at this very moment, um, but we're just gonna do the encounter, how it's printed here um, again. This is a prototype, I know it's gonna change, but it is very similar to what the final product is gonna be. So we'll read this here. It says, duration is three rounds. Um, I'm gonna use a couple of cubes um, from Hildegard uh, that I had, and we're gonna put those up here, and that's gonna be the amount of rounds that we have to last. Now, one cool thing about this game is it's not necessarily a, um, you must kill every enemy that's out there. All you have to do is survive three rounds. So I might be taking some damage. I might not get rid of everybody, but as long as I survive three rounds, we're gonna be good. So then here it says character placement. Place Ranjitaki on a space three, reveal card 12, and place it on a space eight. Pull two enemy cards, roll one D12 for placement. So what that means, every single one of these spaces has a number on it from one to 15. It says place Ranjitaki on space three. So she's gonna go right there. I'm gonna leave her action points on there just so that I know when I use them or not. These two spaces cannot have anybody go on it. It says pull card 12, and this is gonna be our first main enemy, our first main encounter from the story deck. Once we defeat this one, it's gonna be discarded out of here. It also tells me to draw two enemies. This is the enemy deck. Once an enemy gets discarded, it goes back into the enemy deck for later encounters, okay? So first thing that we'll do is we're gonna place Nalu right here. And then we have our enemies. We're gonna shuffle them up here. Um, and then we're gonna place two of them based on the D12 for card placement. So the first one that we have is Leomaro and we have our D12 and it looks like it's a three, so that's where Ranjitaki is. Um, so what we do then is we go to the closest available space, um, and so how we'll do that is we'll go to number five right here. And then we have our next enemy, and that is Nalani. So it looks like we have the same kind of people, just uh, different versions of them. And that is on space nine, so that's gonna be right there. Okay, now let's kind of talk about uh, these enemies here and what the symbols on the cards mean. So the first thing that you have is this little skull and a number about above it. That is their health marker. So that's how much health they have. Right underneath it, that is their attack options. Um, so this one does a, sh a short range attack. In the center there, you see a little dark circle. That's where Nalu is, and it's gonna hit all of the spaces surrounding that. So if Nalu is here, it can hit all of these spaces that is surrounding it. There's a number two underneath that, and that number two is how much damage it's gonna do for that attack. Right here, we have its movement, so it can move one, and on their turn, they're always gonna move one, and they're gonna do one attack. I say always gonna move one, they're gonna move one if they need to, and then they'll do their attack. Underneath that number, you have your crit, which is 20, and then your miss, which is one. So every time somebody does an attack, um, if you hit the crit value, you're gonna add one to the attack. If you hit the miss value, you're gonna miss the attack. Here on Nalani, we have three health, and their attack is actually a lob, um, and it's long distance, and it's gonna be hitting for three. So how that would work is, let's say Ranjitaki's here, it could lob over Nalu, and attack Ranjitaki. 
And then we have Lemaru. They've got two health. Here, they're sort of hitting like Nalu did, but not all the spaces, they're only doing adjacent. So above them, below them, left and right. So right now, where we're at, we're safe from an attack from them. Um, now, we have line of sight, which is really pretty simple. It's anything that's in line. Uh, you can attack to those. Um, and then we have line of attack. So let's say Nalani is here. I would not be able to reach Nalani unless I did a lob. Um, I cannot just shoot through the character that's there. Okay, So that's kind of how the encounters work. For Ranjitaki, so during the attack, uh, I can do a dart shot, which costs me three action points. And that's going to provide one damage to one target. I can augment that uh, with a stun, which would cost me two more. It does zero damage, but it does give me a crit bonus. And at the end of the round, or I'm sorry, on their round, they would not be able to move. And then we have lob, which we already explained. We have dodge, we have heal, we have influence, and we have step. Dodge you have to do on your turn. Heal you have to do on your turn. Influence you can do on either turn. Influence is spending one action point um, to change the dice value. And then step is movement. Every movement costs one action point. Uh, so that's what we have there. We could add possibly some stuff down there to the action inventory to have more options throughout here. So it looks like we're ready to go. Ranjitaki's crit value is 20 and her miss is five and under. So if she rolls a five and under, we're gonna miss. And then here for Makai's knife, uh, which I added throughout the story, I'm going to get plus one critical point. So really, if I roll a 19, then I get a crit. Um, and if I roll a five, it's technically a six because I get plus one to that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Actually, we forgot one thing. We need to pull a terrain card. And we need to place that. So that's on space six. Now these terrains, and actually some of the cards on here, they have challenges. Um, and the challenge is you roll a d20 and you're trying to roll higher than the number that's there. So this is a physical challenge and I need to roll at least a 10. The requirement is to be adjacent. If I succeed, any enemy adjacent to it gets poisoned. And then I pull a card um, and so on. Nalu has a physical challenge, um, but I must defeat him before I do it. Nalani has a mental challenge. I must defeat her to do it. And then Lemaro um, has a physical challenge and I have to defeat her as well. Let's go ahead and get playing here. I'm gonna use these just kind of as health markers for the enemies. So first thing that I think I'm gonna do is, uh, so there's the symbols down here also. Once you defeat them, that gives you more action points to spend. I think I would like to try to get Lemaru, just because they're only at two health. And then I could get two more action points this round. So we're gonna spend three. And I have to roll a 19 to crit. So we're gonna spend three of these. And we're gonna do a long distance dart shot to Lemaru. Um, and then we're just going to roll my dice, and I got a 9. So if I wanted to, if I had enough action points, I would be able to spend them to up that dice value. So that's a 9 that I rolled. I get plus 1, so technically it's a 10, um, but there's no way for me to get that up to 9. So with that being said, I'm going to do 1 damage to Lemaru. Um, and then we're going to attack her again. We're going to spend three more action points. And we're going to roll our dice. And we got a 13 again uh, with the plus one. That's a 14. Not enough, but that is going to do one damage uh, from the encounter ability. Uh, and that's going to kill her. So it says there's a physical challenge of 10. Requirement is to defeat her. So we're going to do our physical challenge. And we rolled a one. Uh, so that's really terrible. Uh, nothing happens uh, in this case. It doesn't say there's any fail, but we don't get card 82. So this goes away. She goes back to the enemy deck. 
And I do get two more actions because down here at the bottom of the card, I get two more action points. Now what I would like to do is move twice, one, two here, uh, and then I'm gonna perform this physical challenge, which you just have to be adjacent to it. If you succeed, any enemy that's adjacent gets poisoned, um, and then I pull card 80. So we're gonna go ahead and roll for this one. And we got a 13, awesome. With this 13, we passed it. There's no enemies adjacent, unfortunately, so nobody's poisoned, um, but it does say pull card 80. So pull card 80 is here. And card 80 says encased in black paste. Now I do believe this is another card that has been updated, not 100% sure off the top of my head, but again, it's a prototype copy. Um, so this says, the bones begin to spin like brittle branches in a cyclone. They break into smaller pieces, then burst out in every direction. A sharp silver of bone cuts into your cheek. Take one wound. So we spin this down. Tutupo expels an ashen mist from his mouth, and something slides out covered in black paste. You wipe off the foul goo, uncovering a new type of dart. Add the pure start to your action inventory. So with this pure start, I can, it's going to cost two, prevents, it uh, does one damage, but I must combine it with a dart attack. This right here, uh, I, know, I do know this one. It says cost two, it should say target two, so I can target two people, and then it does two crit bonus. Uh, must be combined, and it does a total of one wound per target. So this will go underneath. And that's where we're at. Okay, so I do have one more um, action dice here, and I can do a couple things with it. I could either dodge, I cannot dodge, because that costs two. Um, influence, I might want to keep it to influence their dice, or I can heal. I'm doing okay on the heal on the health right now. Let's keep it, I might influence their dice. So this does say discard cursed bones if you succeed in this challenge, so this is going out. All right, so we're gonna start here with Nalu. Um, we are not in their range of attack, so they are gonna move until we are, and that's gonna be their movement. They are going to attack for two. They're gonna roll their dice, and they got a 10. We're not gonna influence that. So they hit, they're gonna do two damage to us. So we are sitting at zero there. Six health total, this one is done. And then we're going to go with Nalani, and Nalani only has one movement, um, and so they're going to move down, because it is a long-range attack, and then they're going to be able to hit me here. And they're shooting for three, uh, and their crit is 18, and their miss is five. So, they got 18. Um, we're definitely spending this here to bring that down to a 17, and... They're still going to hit me for three, uh, it's just not going to hit me for four. So they're hitting me for three there. Uh, and that's going to bring this all the way down to zero. So now we're sitting at three health. So I think next round we have to heal a little bit. And again, we only have to survive three rounds. We do not have to kill everything in three rounds. So there's one round gone. Uh, at this point, if anybody was poisoned, they would take a damage now, but nobody was poisoned. So now it's time for us to start the next round. So I have my seven action points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to uh, try to attack Nalu here. Um, and we're going to spend quite a bit, I think... We're gonna do the dart shot, which costs three. And then we're also going to do um, the pierce dart, but they're not in a column or in a line. Uh, that would have been nice, but it does do a plus two crit bonus. 
I could stun them, but I'm still going to be in their line of attack, so it doesn't really matter. So, do I want to do the pure start? Damages two adjacent enemies in a column. They're not in a column. But the crit bonus is nice. So what would happen here is I would do one base damage. Then I would do two damage plus this one. If I, And then if I critted, that would be three total wounds to Nalu. Um, which would be really nice. Then I could heal twice. And go from there. Okay, so I think we're going to try it. Um, so we're spending five action points here. And we're going to attack Nalu. Oh, and we got a 19. There we go. So plus one. So what that does here is we're going to do one base damage. We're going to do one damage for the pure start. And then since we critted we're going to get an extra damage as well. So they have three damage on them. That's awesome. That's really good. Uh, now, unfortunately, we only have two movement here. Um, I do kind of want to get out of Nalani's way. Ooh. Let's see. If I move up to here, I'll be down to one health, unless he misses. And if I don't move, if they both hit me, then I'll be dead. But if I move up to here, Nalani cannot reach me. Oh no, she would be able to reach me. She would move here. Hmm. So what would I do? Okay. Maybe I dodge one wound? That wouldn't be enough. Or do I just keep some influence and possibly make them miss? I think we might have to try that. I don't like it. Because he... Ooh. It would have to be a three or less to be able to influence his two... But we really need to influence Nalani because she's the one that's doing three damage. And I'm at three damage. So. Can I completely get out of her way? I don't think I can. So I think we're stuck here. We're going to keep that. We're going to hope that she rolls poorly. Um, and see what happens, I guess. Uh, not the best here. So we'll start with Nalu, and they're going to shoot for Ranjitaki. They got a one. They missed. Wow, that's awesome. That was uh, very lucky. So they missed. They knew they do no damage. Um, Nalani's not going to move either, and we're hoping for a five or under for her roll. And it's a seven. So we're going to spend two action points and we're going to influence this to a five and she's going to miss as well whoa that was awesome i got super lucky there um very cool uh all right so that is end of round two and now i'll get my seven action points back four five six seven okay uh, and we're going to attack Nalu. And we're just going to do the base dart shot. So there's my three. And I got a ten, which deals one damage, which uh, uh, finishes them. So it says physical challenge nine, requirement defeat Nalu. So let's roll uh, an better than a nine. Five. Uh... So here's the thing. I'm getting three more action points because I defeated them. In a way, I kind of want to spend these four just to pull a card to see what it could be uh, and then get three back because that would let me heal up three um, and I would be able to survive her attack. 
So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these four. We're going to spend it to influence this up to a nine, wherever the nine is. Right, so they're at the nine. And then it says here, pull card 13. Oh, there's the nine. Stench of the dead. Nalu drops to his knees, blood oozing from the azure feather dart jutting from his left eye. For now, he ignores this annoyance and begins to speak. I can smell it on you, the true dark sight. You won't escape us when you reek of the dead, he states. Nalu rips the dart from his eye, uncorking a fountain of gore. His body twitches and falls forward into the dirt. You notice that one of his hooks has become loose. You think this might come in handy. Add Nalu's hook to your item inventory, then roll all three challenge dice. So I don't have three challenge dice, um, but we're going to roll this one three times. So let's see, we got a 15, we got a 18, and a 20. Nice. Um, so if all three rolls are 15 or higher, gain one Aberstjern. So that will go there. So I have one of those. I can kind of spend it at any time that I would like to. You can only claim one challenge reward. Reminder, be sure to add your physical, mental, and critical roll points to the appropriate dice rolls. Um, so we did that. And then this will go. So there we go. It's in my inventory. All right, and we defeated them, so we get three action points back. And they are discarded from the story. And then I have three. So I'm going to move... Where can I move that would make her not in my line of attack? Uh, I believe if I go one, two. Nope, that would get her in my line of attack. Uh, I'm just going to heal for three. And then just take some damage here unless she misses again. Um, so they're going to attack Oranjitaki. Uh, they're going to roll their dice. And they got a one, so it's an immediate fail. Look at that. Sweet dice rolls there at the end. Um, so she misses. I take no damage. Uh, and then that's the end of the round. So what it says here, it says if you survive three rounds, reveal card 14. And we're going to go ahead and stop right there. I don't want to spoil any more of the game. Um, but hopefully that gave you a pretty good idea of how um, the encounters work on here. I got some really lucky dice rolls. Um... But I also, you know, had the action points uh, to influence some of those dice rolls as well, which is something that I really like. Uh, this game, to me, it does an awesome job with this encounter um, because it really makes it feel like a puzzle. Uh, and that's what I really like in this, right? I can try to figure out where I can move to get out of her line of attack. You know, I can... If I have another point here on my critical hit, I really only have to roll a certain number. Or if I have, you know, um, more of these actions here, you know, I can add them onto the base action. So there's ways to mitigate um, that luck of the, of the die roll that you have. Uh, and that's something that I really enjoy. I really like these health trackers right here. These go with you throughout the story. There is ways to lose and gain health in the actual cards here. Um, there's ways to add more action points to your starting than, than the seven, and there's ways to lose some as well. Uh, so that's really nice. And then those challenges just kind of add a little extra something on there. Overall, I really like Spire's End, Ranjitaki. It, it feels very familiar, you know, with the pulling the card and reading the story and making a decision. Uh, but then it feels very innovative with this brand new encounter deck, right? You've got 15 spaces here, and it seems like you've got enough space to move around. But in reality, it's like, oh, wait, if I do this, I'm still in their line of sight, right? So you really have to kind of sit here and puzzle it out and try to make the best actions. Seven action points seems like a lot. Um, but when you're spending five of them in one move, you know, they're they're kind of gone for the rest of the game or for the rest of that round. So do I think this is one that you should definitely keep your eye out on? Yes, I 100 um, percent think that this is a game. Uh, if you're into these kind of narrative driven stories, if you've played the other Spire's End, uh, this is one that you'll really enjoy. Uh, that's all that I have. 
Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, drop a comment below. Uh, the link is attached below to the Kickstarter. Uh, and as for me, that's all I have. Until next time.